A Letter to Sarah by A Countryman Dearest Sarah, The Illinois weather was perfect on that Saturday morning late in the sixth summer of your life when the two of us took up our walking sticks and headed down the quiet country road. The beautiful blue sky above held hardly a single cloud. When Grandpa told you that big tree was a sycamore, you sang the song you learned in Sunday school about the little man named Zacchaeus, who climbed one so he could see Jesus. You remembered the milkweeds we had found on our last walk, watching eagerly for them in the roadside ditch. There weren't any when you first had the thought, but there were a lot of butterflies to distract your attention. The brisk breezes rustled the dry leaves of the corn plants as we stripped back the husks from a nice full ear, nine inches long. In the fence row, the brown remnants of Queen Anne's lace had become just like empty bird's nests, also resembling goblets with long stems proudly erect. The wild roses all had faded, but in the place of blossoms, now bright red-orange berries hang, full of seeds for another year. Then, around the first curve, you found the milkweed pods you were looking for. And as the wind carried the fluffy seeds away like the soap bubbles you love to blow, you laughed gaily. You said, Grandpa, we're having so much fun. You said it twice more before we got back home, remember? The farm dogs barked as we rounded the second curve and went into Deer Creek, but seeing our sticks, they kept their distance. It was important to you that Grandpa see your school where we rode the merry-go-round in the yard. The steel hubs moaned as they turned just the same as 45 years ago when Grandpa first heard the sound. Then, when we sat side by side swinging high, your delighted girlish giggles drifted through the pleasant air to be answered by the saucy cry of a jaybird. As we started our walk home, we noticed the sky was now dotted with lots of little white clouds, and we wondered where they came from so fast. That's the way you grow older, Sarah. You don't seem to notice it happening, but all of a sudden things have changed and time has swiftly fled. This is the reason we try to make the most of it when we're together. You don't understand that just now, but someday you surely will. There was something in the tall grass growing in the ditch that interested you, and you slipped on the loose stones getting to it. Do you remember what it was? I don't. When we got to the top of the hill, we could see the water towers of three villages clearly in the distance. This reminded us of Uncle Greg, who lives by a water tower, and of the new bride he'll be bringing home in just a short time. That's another milestone, another change in your small world as you gain a new aunt. You followed the woolly worm across the road, exclaiming, yuck, as you squashed him. What do you suppose he thought about it? You picked a dandelion with a full round head, and your expression was a joy to behold while you blew the seeds into the wind. The countryman watched all this with a loving heart, reflecting that of such simple pursuits, life's fondest memories are made. He is grateful to be your affectionate grandpa.